Hey guys, it's David from Auto Impress. I'm in Japan in Tokyo with Zach from Car Ash. We're good friends, but it's the first <laughs> time we're meeting finally after many years of collaborating together. In Japan of all yeah, places. Yeah, and it's been a lot of fun with you and your dad hosting me way back when I was a little tiny channel. So I've never forgotten that. Really appreciate you guys hosting me and helping me to learn about uh, Automotive Press channel and stuff like that. So that's a huge, huge thing for me. Love it, dude. But we are in Japan, you're on vacation. I'm here on the kind of semi-vacation slash business. And we're meeting up here, right here at the um, corporate showroom at Nissan. It just so happens to be a place we picked. Yeah. But I want to talk to you about some interesting trend, which I've noticed sort of from an engineering perspective. Okay. That is both the manufacturing as well as engineering of new models seems to have really taken a dive, you know, both in terms of overall quality, but also the choice and decisions they're making in engineering seems to be just a bit off yeah. to me these days. I'm talking about models that have come out recently, 2024, 2025 model years, and they don't seem to have the same kind of robust engineering and manufacturing as they used to have. And this includes the almighty Toyota. Yeah, can we cut through it though? Quality, yeah. we're talking about quality, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah, like absolutely. car quality post pandemic is maybe, is that what you're saying? Somewhat not, not questionable, great? yeah. Okay. So I know, for example, there's been a major recalls, right? So, so like, what, what are you seeing on your side of the fence there? So many recalls, yeah. David. I mean, obviously we track this stuff back at Car Edge all the time. One of the yeah. biggest things we look at, we call it the uh, recall uh, uh, leaderboard. Oh, Ford, unfortunately, is yes, always yeah. leading it. But interestingly, mm. some Japanese automakers have been making their way. Like yeah. Toyota, for example, 100,000 engines getting recalled because of debris. And then yeah. we just had very recently General Motors had another 100,000. Yeah, with the V8. Also with the debris. Inside. With debris. Yeah. And these are <laughs> These are newer model year yeah. vehicles, That's which right. I've found yeah. fascinating. We get comments on the Car Edge channel all the time. Hey, is you know new car quality going downhill? Right. We're not qualified to answer that. We just look <laughs> at the data. But, but you get the actual data, the actual customers' feedback. Oh, right? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's clearly showing something is happening. Customers are also complaining about just the, you know, in terms of paint quality, in terms of the materials they're using, like, you know, what are you hearing? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing all sorts of things where around quality. I mean. When you're mentioning the paint and the fit and finish, I go back to some of the early Tesla models that were coming out and all the challenges <laughs> yeah, that they yeah, had yeah. there. I don't think that's pandemic related, yeah. that's, that's startup related. Yeah. But I think the recall piece is the biggest one that we've just seen in, in upswing. And it is interesting seeing more of the Japanese automakers mm -hmm. showing up in the headlines. That's yes. been kind of foreign. And, and like, is, yeah. I go back to the Toyota engine recall because not only was it the Tundra, it was also the GX, which is like this highly anticipated, yeah. but selling with markups and things like that. So these, these hot products. Right, and then right. seeing stop sales yes. is just such a... I know. Yeah, so they had, in case you didn't um, uh, know, Toyota has recalled the twin turbo V6 engine on the um, 2022 Toyota Tundra with debris yeah. inside. Also the LX, actually, LX, yeah. um, that's built in Japan. Yeah. Built in Japan, the engine is also built in Japan, but had the exact same problem yeah. with the US built one, which can only assume that they standardize the manufacturing system, the method and equipment, and they ship to both countries. Yeah. And so they both created the exact same defect, basically. But so, right? so where's that quality challenge mm. coming from? Right. Why, why, is it, why is it showing up now? Right, yeah, so, I mean, and it's not just that. It's yeah. also about the quality of the materials, the yeah. choice, the decision they're making, like for example, Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro, which is an amazing truck, yeah, yeah. has the isodynamic seats in the back, which is a really cool feature, but cut back on the, the seat at the yeah. back, the roomness, so there's not much space there. So these are kind of all decisions that, that I find to be unusual. Yeah. And, I, and I, I kind of stepped back from everything, looked at the whole thing with a different set of eyes, then I realized actually most of these cars with somewhat questionable quality or, or engineering were all designed during the COVID time. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you kind of step back and figure out how long it takes to design a car, which is about four to six years, depending on the model. Interesting. A brand new model might be longer, um, refresh might be shorter, but around 2019, 2020, uh, whatever the cars they were designing would have come out around now, 2024, 2025. That's a great nugget. So the cars <laughs> that are being produced, the model year vehicles that we're getting today, yes. were designed in the throes of the pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah. During that kind of 18 month period when we couldn't meet in person, uh, you know. Yeah, wait, can I ask you a question? <laughs> sure. Do cars get designed better or worse over Zoom? <laughs> Probably trick, worse. Trick question. Probably <laughs> worse. Yeah, way worse, right? And you know, especially because now we have a better technology for doing virtual meetings. Sure. But back then we just started. Yeah. They went from 100% in person, almost, to almost 100% virtual. Wow. And designers, engineers, manufacturing companies, suppliers, everyone was 
struggling to figure out the best way to collaborate. At the end of the day, you're looking at a screen with six or eight people on the screen, trying to figure out how to design, engineer, and manufacture a car. It just isn't possible to do it well. So you think some um, of these kind of poor decisions came out of Zoom calls rather than like meeting in person? Potentially, at the yeah. Wow. I, I think so, because yeah. it seems to work out when you match up the, the timing, and also the fact that they were new to virtual meeting, they didn't yeah. know how to meet at that time. The technology wasn't quite there. Uh, so whether it's Microsoft team or Zoom meeting, they were doing their best to try to figure out, but how many people are actually paying 100% attention during virtual meetings, right? We're looking at on the I'm phone, not. the other emails. <laughs> and So I think the concentration level, uh, the level of collaboration, the understanding of the you know com complexity to do with manufacturing engineering, uh, were just not understood well during that wow. time. So I, I, I think, rightly or wrongly, I think right now we're seeing the worst of the worst because the cars were engineered, designed, or decisions being made during the worst time in the history of, of our society, right? Wow. When things were really difficult to, to meet up and to make the right kind of decisions. Um, but there's a good news. Yeah, what's the, the good time news? horizon on this? Give me the light <laughs> yeah. at the end of the tunnel. So it's usually four to six years for a new model, sometimes longer for more complex models. But it's about four to five years. But these days, when they say they have a new model, it's actually not all new. Mm. You know, the basic platform, the chassis are shared, the part train is carried over from another product. And so you're kind of skinning the whole model okay. and putting a different body and a different interior, but underneath it could be very similar to an existing model. As and a customer seeing the price hikes on these cars, I love hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so somehow, you know, they're not designing a whole new model, yeah. but yet they're charging it and selling it like a whole new model, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, to go back to this whole discussion about timeline, I think we're going to see the light at the end of the tunnel in 2026, 2027, and beyond. Okay. Because those cars would have been designed sort of a 2021, 2022. Uh, hopefully 2023, when things kind of went back to normal, we can fly into different places. Yeah. The design studios, the engineering companies, suppliers, manufacturing people can all gather again. And now it's like we're almost 100% back to the way it was, you know? And talking face-to-face, -face, actually physically touching the car, yeah. looking at it, you can't replace the experience. Yeah. So I, I think in a couple of years, we will once again, hopefully see the best of the best instead of the worst of the worst, yeah. both in terms of engineering, product development, and also manufacturing. And maybe we'll see less recalls, I hope. <laughs> and better design decisions. And better design, yeah, absolutely. I, I think so. And we're, we're already seeing that because uh, all these car companies are introducing and announcing new models very yeah. recently yeah. You know, from Toyota and from many other manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah. And I can already see the design looks good, you know, the philosophy looks right, yeah. the decisions around powertrain, everything looks good. So for example, um, Lexus TX that was yeah. announced last year. Uh, well, everyone assumed that they will have the four-cylinder plug-in hybrid, but that's the only type of uh, plug-in hybrid that Toyota had, yeah. but they announced it with a V6 plug-in hybrid. Naturally aspirated V6, 3.5, yeah. with a plug-in hybrid system. Yeah. I mean, no one saw that coming. Yeah. And that's the right decision for a large SUV with a Lexus nameplate. You have to have a V6 engine, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I heard that that was from a feedback from the dealers and customers, yeah. and they made the right decision. Yeah. Right. So I'm hoping that there's more and more of these kind of um, you know, good uh, good positive decisions being made yeah. and that by next year, hopefully next year, for sure by the following year, we will see amazing cars with some really good engineering, better quality, less recalls. This makes a lot of sense and I'm also taking, I'm having flashbacks right now <laughs> to all these vehicles during the chip shortage that were yeah. produced without features and functionality. Yes. There's yes. a whole cohort it of, is. Yes. there's a lot of alliteration, but cohort of COVID cars That's right. that are out there that I think, you know, your professional mm. opinion, lower quality, poor, more, more poorly designed, yeah. and also maybe lacking certain features and functionality. That's right. Yeah. Compromises, Comprom right? Yeah, yeah. Cohort of COVID cars with compromises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I hate to blame everything on COVID. It's probably a little bit more complicated than of that. Of course, of course. Yeah, with all the supply chain issues that are happening at the same time. But if you kind of go back the root cause where things have started, I, I still do think is the around that time. And from there, we end up with the supply chain issues. From there, we end up with the chip issues. And so they had to re-engineer many different things under the most difficult circumstances. So my hat's off to you know, all the automakers who actually survived the COVID yeah, and yeah. made it work. So there's no, I'm not, you know, making a light of this issue. No, no. Uh, but there's no question that I'm 100% sure if I talk to some of the senior engineers, which I do oftentimes, 
that they will kind of secretly admit yeah. that COVID times were tough times to design cars and manufacture cars. Well, right? look at us now. We're at the end of it, it seems like. Maybe another year of some of these I think you know, so. prior decisions leading to kind of that light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. like you said. So I hope that by the time next year comes around, we see better cars that you, at the, on your end of you know, representing the consumer side, yeah. will see less recalls, happier customers. So only time will tell. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out very shortly. Yeah. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think um, of, in terms of what's happening with the quality, in terms of manufacturing. Uh, Zach is a good friend. His channel is way bigger than me. He's much more credible than me when it comes to <laughs> talking on this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and I have so much to learn from you. You're very and, kind. Yeah, no, no. You and your dad have been absolutely amazing in my life. So, well, I've, I've yeah. learned some really great nuggets here. And I, thought, I don't think I'm buying a new car until 2026, <laughs> wait, maybe wait 2027. Wait, yeah. wait, wait at least one that. year. Yeah. I love it. Well, thanks, Sounds David. Good. Yeah, we'll, we'll go around, spend some time in Japan, and uh, hopefully we'll have some fun. I'll see you guys later. Thanks, Zach. Nice yeah. job. <laughs>